uh, Michael McNamara, from your perspective, um, because you are you are concerned about this plan and mm. uh, concerned about a British investment for owning tracts of land, uh, planting on that land, and then Quilta essentially managing it. Um, but what impact do you think this will have? Why are you so worried about it? Well, I suppose I'm worried essentially that it's going to amount to a lot of greenwashing because at the moment, uh, Quilta's, uh, the vast majority of the Quilta estate is Sitka spruce. Uh, it's a monoculture. Um, yes, it's good for carbon sequestration, you get mm. carbon credits, and I suppose there's an issue about who's going to get the carbon credits from this land and is it going to go to the Gresham House? Is that what investors are looking for? If it goes to Gresham House, obviously it's not going to go to Ireland, even though the Irish Strategic Investment Fund is investing in it. I asked the question, didn't get a whole lot of clarity. There's also a lack of clarity about when this plan was, uh, you know, both the Tonish and the Taoiseach said they knew nothing about it, yet it transpired today that I think both ministers, yourself and Minister McConnell, knew about this for some time, even signed off on it or at least approved no. it. Well, there was a letter um, uh, sent by the, the European Parliament. But you Department. were aware that Creelty were going to engage but, but, with private investment in yeah, order been, to meet these targets. That's been widely... But you know, the big yeah, issue is that, aware. you know, we're told that this is necessary to increase afforestation, yet Gresham House say that they're going to meet their targets through acquiring existing forestry and afforestation. So that begs the question, if they're going to buy existing forestry, how is that going to increase the afforestation in the country? And if they're going to afforest, well, what's it going to be? Is it just going to be Sitka spruce? Because very little lives in these huge plantations. I mean, there's a huge... I, I live in Scarif County Clare. There's a, if you drive from Scarif to Gort over to Loch Ray, back to Scarif, it's about a 40 kilometre triangle. There's very little living in these huge Sitka spruce plantations, very little employment right. being created, very little benefit to the local community. So actually community. your concern isn't so much that it's a British, British investment fund no, coming in and buying of, the land, of, of, of course what's it is going to be planted there? Of course it is, because it means that if every farm that's for sale is a is a, what was once a family farm in albeit marginal area, and we're told that there's a role for marginal farms, but increasingly it seems that the Department of Agriculture is saying their only role is to sell their land, sell their family farm to a British investor fund who can then get the carbon yeah. uh, credits and engage in, okay. in a degree of greenwashing. Who's making the money? Who is this profiting? Because investment well, ultimately, funds don't go in, as we know, with housing, yes, but unless there's money to be made. But in order to draw down the state funds through the grants and the premia, and this is the difficulty, Quilch are not entitled to, to draw down premia. Farmers are. Farmers will get 20 years premia. Non-farmers will get 20, or sorry, 15 years premia. Quilcha as a state entity are not entitled to draw down premia and haven't been so since 2003. So that's why they haven't been involved in state in, Is, in, plant, in okay. planting. But this, this gives them an opportunity to re-engage in that. Um, by is it using, right? like, is it, I mean, the question is: Are you are you happy with that plan? Are you happy with the way they're going listen, about it? Listen, I think this particular um, Gresham House deal, and it has, I, I accept, it's caught a lot of attention. It's it's genuine concern out there as to it. There has been a lot of, to be honest, misinformation around it. The figures bandied around have been going from like 120,000 hectares, you know, it, big figures. We're talking about three and a half thousand hectares over right. the next five years. That's about 700 a year. That's less than a tenth of what our annual targets okay. are in afforestation. So, but that's one tiny, this is one tiny um, pick, um, piece in, in the overall puzzle picture that is afforestation. Okay. A tiny piece is what we're hearing and from Pippa Hackett here. Here. It's three to four thousand um, hectares when what we have to do is huge. It's four hundred and fifty thousand. So in the grand scheme of things, it, it's not a lot of land that's being sold off to foreign interests. Yeah, but you know, there was a time when councils used to build houses all over Ireland. And then we were told, actually, we don't need councils to build houses. We'll get private investors in from across the world and they'll build all the houses we need. We know where that's ended disastrously. We need houses. We need local authorities doing them again. So it seems to me that that approach is being replicated in this. Well, we couldn't because we couldn't get the licensing sector with regard to afforestation uh, permits and filling permits. We couldn't get our house in order within the department to encourage farmers to plant land because for a vast number of farmers who are in forestry, they're incredibly frustrated with the delays in afforestation. I appreciate it's improved since uh, it, has Im it is improving. Improved, yeah. uh, but as of now, if a farmer wants to plant land, it makes an application, it won't be processed because of further bureaucratic delays. So on the one hand, we're telling farmers that you should go in this direction. And on the other, they're meeting barrier after barrier after barrier. Um, and it, so they're walking away. And instead of trying to work with farmers, Farmers and encourage them to carry out forestry and a, and a more maybe sustainable type of forestry than that which Quilcha engage in. Instead, we're going to private investment funds, we're going to go with Quilcha, we're going to plant these vast tracts of land with Sitka spruce, which is not, has Three a lot of... Three and a half thousand acres which, is not vast, No, Michael. but these, these vast Quilcha plantations, Pippa, I've invited you to come to Slivakti to I'm see what's going... I'm looking forward to coming. I, I, 
brilliant because I'll show you that nothing, like, it is not sustainable, the type of right. forestry that's been carried out by Quilch okay. at the moment. And getting foreign investors to, to find, to buy land for them to engage in unsustainable forestry cannot be the solution. It'll just result in greenwashing. I'm sorry, but I, I don't see any yeah. answers there. Um, Gresham House have said that Irish in investors amount for mo most of this most investments of course in they do. this the Irish state today. is putting 25 million into it all oh, right okay so you you believe that that's where that's where well, when, when you say the most of Irish investment there's 30, there's 35 million in the fund up to now the Irish taxpayers have, have pumped up 25 of the 35 to date right. if government chooses to direct Creelta to scrap this plan so there's a review taking place now onto this whole deal and if that's the direction because they sense you know public disquiet over it What's, what's the plan? What's the option? So they've made it clear they won't, though. They're sort of, it's like St. Augustine, oh Lord, let me be good, but not just yet. I mean, we don't like this, we don't approve of it, uh, but sure, we're going to implement this, it anyway. The, is that the, the case? This is, a, this is a five year plan, and, and it's probably worth doing to see how it works, to see how, do, do, do they meet so the test, plan targets? Test the waters no, with but the I mean, it's signed, it's, it's signed, it's a signed uh, contract. We're not going to pull back out that? of that. I think it's one element of it. We can see clearly, and I accept the concerns, and we can see that there is, you know, relatively widespread public disquiet about that and that's important to take that on board. It's important for Quilcha to take that on board, it's important for the, us in government to take that on board. Quilcha also engage with public bodies as well. But They're engaging with yeah. Ward Namona, I, there's potential there. I, I come back to it Pippa Hackett with if if it's not the preferred deal, how did how did it come to the point that the deal was done if you've known about it? Well, if you've known that Quilcha has pursued private interests has been looking at private partnerships to meet climate targets that they actually themselves shouldn't have to meet, essentially. It is, it is a government. This is what governments have been tasked with right around the world. But if, you know, if Quilta were pursuing private interests and now you're not happy with Well, they the have deal, already pursued par private interests up to now. The Nature Trust is another, yeah. if you like, leg of this stool that, that deals entirely with, with um, broadleaf planting, native woodlands creation. Um, that's one as aspect of it. This is another aspect which deals with, with um, commercial production. And then a third element of it will be engaging with public bodies and public owned land already ideally yes we we we, we keep the um you know state lands in state in in public ownership and i suppose that that is the preferred option we need to now examine how we do that right. how we can you okay. know you know adjust to the state aid rules that are there and and ultimately you know it's a discussion right. we need to make okay it's a discussion now that has to be had um uh, Michael, I mean, do, are you hopeful that, you know, with fast track licences and, and all those grants going to farmers, that it'll balance out somewhat? Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of farmers who, who, who want to um, improve their income from their holding and if it's profitable to engage in, um, in a, sustain, a sustainable type of agriculture, they will do so. I mean, you know, we've, forestry is a profitable sector across many countries in Europe. Uh, sustainable forestry is profitable across many countries in Europe. It could be in Ireland. But on the state aid thing, I mean, the state aid rules were recently negotiated and there's no record of Ireland having intervened to try to bring about the changes okay. that... That, that, uh, Pip has it's just only mentioned. just January the first this year oh, that the new state, state aid rules yeah, are in, were, and now we're engaging they, with those now. They, they they were the culmination of a, a, a discussion and negotiation at a European level and there's All no right. record of Ireland having we'll ever have, made the request that they're now being discussed. But we'll we're going to, to engage with them now. We will have well, to leave it there. Now.